All right, this video is going to show you how to perform the tensile test on your dog bone sample that you made in the machine shop. And before we do anything, you've got to make sure you get your measurements from your sample so that you can correctly do the stress strain calculations that come along a little bit later. So the target diameter for this was 0.125 inches, but don't just do your math with that number. Uh, actually use a pair of dial calipers and check your measurement. And it's a good idea to check at both ends as well as the middle because there tends to be a little bit of variation from one end to the other. And you wanna find this, the point with the lowest, smallest diameter because uh, that's most likely where the sample is going to break. So this sample is measuring 0.1 two, one. So that's the number that I'm actually going to use on my math, 0.121, record that on your lab sheet. And then for the length, we need to use the little jaws on the caliper and we need to measure uh, the length of the straight portion before it starts to curve out. So we don't wanna capture that little radius that, that happens in there, we wanna capture the straight portion. And it's a little bit of a tricky measurement to take, but try your best. So this is not actually exactly one inch. I'm a little bit short of that. It's about 0.95. That's the number I'm gonna use for my strain calculation. Again, record those measurements. Before you do anything, the first thing you've got to check is whether the tester is already in a low position. You've gotta return it to its home position before you can do your test. So uh, usually you're just gonna to have to click this button and it'll say returning home. So next you need to get your sample set up for testing. So we should have the quarter 20 threaded insert on the bottom of the tester. Go ahead and thread one end of your part in there. When you're tightening, try to tighten from the fat part, not from the top. Um, the last thing we wanna do here is to break the skinny portion of your sample, trying to insert it here. Then the top of the tester goes over and you can thread the top knob down onto your upper threaded region. If you're having a tricky time lining up your threads and you need to hold it, be careful. Again, you can use a pair of pliers to hold onto the top fat part of your sample if you have to, but do not let this knob twist the skinny middle section of your sample. So I'm threading that on there until it's just snug. So now we need to take the shield down. The shield's got to be in place in order for the tester to run. Next, you need to jump on the desktop computer right next to the stress tester and find the program SSA, which should be on the desktop or you might have to search for it in the start menu. And when we open up SSA, we are first prompted to put in a little bit of information. First, put your name. Then we're gonna give this a file name, and for that you can just put your name followed by the type of material that you are testing. Uh, for material, I'm gonna be testing brass. Uh, for communication port, I'll pick COM3. And then we need to pick a folder where our test data is going to be saved. So for that, we should be clicking on student share, high school, technology, Dillman, POE and tensile test. And you may see other students' tensile tests in there. Yours will be saved in there alongside it. But I'm going to select current folder and I verify here that yes, that's where my test is going to be sent. If you don't pick the right folder, then your test is going to get sent to somewhere hard to find. Okay. Now I need to set up the parameters of my test a little bit. So I'm going to go to test configuration. I'm gonna make sure that I am performing a continuous test, meaning that the force is applied continuously, uh, greater and greater and greater until uh, failure occurs. And I don't want to stop at 500 pounds, I wanna stop at 1,000 pounds. So our samples are gonna get fairly close to that. And I can see that, that those settings are changed up here now. With my dog bone in the tester and the safety shield shut, I can start my test. <laughs> and
And as you can see, it climbs steeply, it follows generally the line of the stress drain curve that we expect to see, and then ultimately we have fracture and the tester stops. So what I'm looking at here isn't exactly a stress strain curve, this is a force displacement curve. So depending on the small differences in the length or the diameter of your sample versus somebody else's sample, we might see different numbers appearing here on both the force and the elongation side of the graph. But that's okay because the rest of this lab, you'll be accounting for those differences and figuring out the stress and strain. And in theory, we should be calculating the exact same amount of uh, axial strength for each of our brass samples, even though they vary somewhat in size. So before you move on from this step, be sure to save your data. You've got to make sure you're saving your data, and it's a good idea also to save your graph. So I'm gonna click yes, graph is saved. Now if I go look in that folder, I have two files in there that are both named after uh, my name, the material that was tested, and the date and time of the test, that's important. So uh, one of these is simply an image file showing my force displacement graph. And the other one of these is a spread a CSV file, a spreadsheet file filled with all the measurements that were just taken for both displacement and force. Now, the next set of instructions is going to walk you through turning these numbers into stress and strain numbers. And uh, you have a few questions to answer from that point forward.